For many farmers, the race is on now to reap the last of the harvest before the falling temperatures and shorter days of autumn close the door. And today on Songs of Praise, I'll be finding out how one farmer's faith is helping her cope with far more than just the pressures of harvest. You couldn't live in this environment and this life with everything it throws up at you without having a faith. It's Andrea! Andrea Begley, the winner of BBC One's The Voice, reveals to Claire McCullum what truly inspires her. Having that faith and, and God around me has always been very important to me. And Lindsay Chapman is in Suffolk, where one village helps some winged visitors get through the summer. I'm here at the Whirlington Swift Festival, where these fabulous birds have made the church their new home. And we also hope you'll find some inspiration from our music today. And we start with a real Harvest Festival favourite. time to gather in the crops and, for Christians, a time also to give thanks. Although it's an ancient festival, the modern British tradition of celebrating the end of harvest really took hold in the mid-19th century. Here, deep in the Dorset countryside, the harvest remains a crucial time for farming families like the Foots, who work their 3,000 acres near Weymouth. Hi, Joe. Hello, John. Can I come aboard? Come aboard. Thank you. There's still 600 acres out in the fields, and for youngest son Joe, time is running out. We started off harvest with good weather in July and uh, the first week of August, 
and then the heavens just opened. I know we should be used to it in England, but it just rained and it, uh, yeah, non stop heavy not, rain, exactly day after day. Yeah, and we just sat there watching all our work from the whole year sort of go down the drain as, uh, as these great crops are just sort of going to waste. But now the sun is out, so things are starting to look a little better. Exactly. We're, uh, we're flat out harvesting now to try and salvage these crops and get them in as quickly as we can before the weather breaks again. But this farming family's battle to reap the harvest comes on top of a personal tragedy which struck them just a couple of months ago. Joe's father, Charles, died suddenly from a blood clot in his heart while mending a fence on the farm. It was a huge shock to the whole family. Judy had been his wife for 42 years. Now tell me, Judy, what kind of a man was Charles? Charles was a, um, a very practical, straightforward character, a very straightforward man. Um, he always said, you bring nothing into the world and you take nothing out of it. Man of the soil? Man of the soil. And it, he was a man of strong faith, wasn't he? He was a man of strong faith, yes. You couldn't, you couldn't live in this environment and this life with, with the seasons, the good and the bad weather and everything it throws up at you without having a faith. Along with Judy, Charles was a church warden at Holy Trinity, which nestles alongside their farmyard at Bincombe. Charles's death hit this tight-knit community hard and more than 700 people turned out to pay their respects. It says something about the man, what he contributed to his legacy he's left behind. What an amazing tribute to somebody who has lived, born, brought up and farmed this country for 70 years, really. So tell me about your faith. Well, I'm hugely lucky, you know. Um, I have had a faith, I suppose, all my life. It's, it's been a self-invented faith. Um, and How do you mean? In that I, I was not really taken to church as a child, but I've always sought it out. I've sought out a church, a place to worship, and gradually become really interested in, in the Christian faith. And when I'm standing here in the church, I know that all is well. There's a permanent memory to Charles at one of the highest points on their farm, a cross he made and erected this year with the help of his grandchildren to mark Good Friday. What was your first impression when you saw it? I thought it? it was ghastly. I thought it was dreadful. I said, oh, you can't put that up with all those plastic. It was a real Charles Heath Robinson sort of use up bits and pieces. But I have to say now it's the best cross I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> How would you sum up, do you think, Judy, uh, this year? Well, I suppose it's just been a, a life-changing year, life-changing experience. Um, and even in the dark moments, I suppose, faith is creeping around in the corner and then a day to, like today, it bursts forth and you know it's there. Mm -hmm.